Hi, welcome to EdTech Camp on Air. I'm Natalie Kogan. I teach grade eight. And I'm Antonia Filippelli, the special education resource teacher. We have worked together at Mackenzie Glen Public School for many years now. We've always collaborated to meet the needs of all of our, our learners. We are both passionate about the way digital tools can promote student voice so that all students in our classrooms achieve success daily. So our presentation is going to be focusing on how to use Screencastify to increase student engagement and to promote student voice in the classroom. So we're going to be inviting you to engage in this presentation by using hashtag EdTechCampOnAir on Twitter. And you can also tweet us at Natalie Kogan and at Aunt underscore Filippelli. We look forward to your tweets. Okay, so let's get started. All right, so our session goals are going to be to introduce to you what Screencastify is. Um, we're going to be sharing with you some examples of how we've been using Screencastify, uh, both in our homeroom as well as in our SSD classrooms, um, to increase student engagement, promote student voice, um, support our learners. Um, and then at the end, we're going to walk you through how to ha get Screencastify for you. Um, so we thought it was important to kind of connect to our overarching um, learning focuses and learning goals coming down from our school board. So it was important for us to include um, the student success goals that are part of our director's annual plan for this year. Um, so some of the areas that our school board is continuing to focus on is to foster well-being and mental health, building collaborative relationships, um, empowering ethical leadership, and championing equity and inclusivity. So encompassing all of these domains ultimately leads to student success. So in using the digital tool Screencastify and leveraging this tool within our classrooms, um, we're supporting equity with all of our learners, making it accessible for all, as well as giving all of our learners a voice, um, promoting their, um, their leadership, sorry, and promoting their use of voice and equity and inclusivity. So what is Screencastify? We've been talking about it and you're like, ah, what is this? What are they talking about? Um, so the simple answer is that it's a screen recorder for Chrome. So basically what's going to do, it's going to capture whatever is on your screen and it's going to turn it into a video um, in web and format. The video is then going to be automatically um, saved to your Google Drive. And I'm going to pause there for a second to give you some time to think about the possibilities of the things you could do or that your students can do if they can add their voice to anything that's on the screen and then turn that into a video. Okay, so now that you've thought about it, we're going to share some of the ways that we've used Screencastify in our classrooms and how that's helped our students share their voice and help them through some of their accommodations and their modifications and their IEPs. Okay, so now that we've got you thinking about the potential of Screencastify, here are some of the ways that we've used Screencastify to support all of our learners in our classrooms, just as Natalie had mentioned. So we put together some examples that showcase how Screencastify has elevated student voice. So here's just a brief overview of the different areas we'll be speaking to today, and we'll be giving you some of those specific examples through videos and through a website, a G site that we've created for you to access later. Please excuse our school announcements. <laughs> so Screencastify allows our students' presentations to move up to a whole new level of innovation, interaction, and use of student voice. We'll share some amazing classroom examples of how Screencastify has really pushed our students towards critical thinking and really promoted that area. Screencastify has also been an amazing tool for pol polio, portfolio reflections, <laughs> apologize, for student-led conferences, as well as providing students with opportunities for self-reflection at the beginning and end of units. Um, as a way of reviewing learning and reflecting on next steps. Um, as well, through Screencastify, we've really tapped into verbal feedback for our students, um, making it accessible. And this has been specifically important for our identified learners, where um, hearing information through auditory um, modes um, really helps solidify the learning and the feedback. So we'll be sharing some of those examples as well. And when teaching to all learners in our classrooms, accommodations and modifications are allowing us to give multiple entry points for students to access learning and to determine if tasks are going to be successful. So we use Screencastify to uh, access many of these multiple entry points through their accommodations and modifications. Um, once again, especially important for our IEP students. 
So a final piece that we'll be sharing with you um, is how we view Screencastify through assessment and evaluation, um, supporting valid and reliable assessment when engaging in conversations and through observations and products with our students. So throughout the next few slides, we've collected various examples, how we've each used Screencastify, aligning with the five areas we've just spoken to. Um, we hope the videos offer um, you with some inspiration and spark some creativity and use of Screencastify in your classrooms. Okay, so the first thing that we said that we have used it for is innovative student presentations. And so we found this especially um, great for students who are really anxious presenting in front of the class. So I think all of us can think of a student who, when we say we're, we're going to be presenting this, they get extremely anxious and nervous. Um, and so I've gradually supported some of my students by telling them they could use Screencastify to record their presentation. They could hear themselves um, and then they don't have to worry about reading their slides in front of the class or really being there and like live presenting live. So this has helped them and then we gradually move them towards maybe just recording parts of their presentation and presenting some things live to where they're now comfortable presenting in front of the group. So this really helps um, students. Uh, Students, some students might need more time thinking and they they might want to pre-record. It's recess. Okay, so some students might want some more time thinking and they want to pre-record their presentation just so that they're not um, having to think on the spot in front of everyone in class. So that really is one of the areas that it addresses. So this is uh, one of my students' videos that he created for his uh, book presentation. They were to um, do a summary of a read aloud that we did to show their understanding of oral texts. Um, so a lot of students were, they had choices of how they wanted to present their summary and the student wanted to create a Prezi um, and he wanted to add his voice to it because they were supposed to add their thoughts and opinions to it as well. So I'm just gonna play a short clip of this just so you can see what it looks like. Introduction. A Long Walk to Water is a book based on a true story about a little boy who grew up without a family and walked for up to years at a time just for shelter, food, and water. For extra info, you can go to this website. Start of his day. Ava that was a little boy who was going to school in South Sudan. He was about to go home when all of a sudden he heard gunshots. He ran to the bush ran to the bush with his fellow classmates and he didn't stop running. Salo was scared. He didn't have his brothers or sisters or his parents with him. He didn't know what to do, so all he did was follow. So I'm going to stop it there because um, I'm not going to bore you with the entire presentation. But it's not boring. It's actually now you can hear his voice. You can hear his expression. You can hear uh, fluency. So you can imagine all the different things that you could uh, use Screencastify for. And you can see um, he has the same screen as we have here. He has um, these little tools down here where he can pause his recording and he can keep playing and he can um, use... Uh, pointers to kind of point things out as he yeah. is and going through his presentation. Good. So give them, it gives students lots of different options when they're thinking about how to do an innovative presentation. All right, let's look at goal setting through our portfolio of reflections and take a look at the benefits this has allowed for our students to really share their voice and their goals for the year. So when thinking about reflections and student-led conferences, it was a perfect opportunity for our students to use a tool that would allow them to share their thinking, set their goals, and review their learning for the year and have a video presentation for their parents to see. This was specifically, sorry, important for parents who were unable to attend our student-led conferences. So it ensured that the goal setting and the learning was able to then be shared at home with parents so that the connection between school and home um, was maintained. Um, and it's really important for our students, specifically our identified students, to reflect on their learning and set their goals, um, to think about the strategies and tools that support their learning. Um, allowing Screencastify, I'm sorry, using Screencastify as a way to share their thinking um, and set their goals, enable them to go back and remember some of the pieces that they wouldn't necessarily have been able to share with their parents in a conversation because sometimes the format of a student-led conference um, can sometimes shut down our students 
for that are, as Natalie mentioned earlier, that may have anxieties about presenting, even when it comes to parents and teachers. So Screencastify provided them with a great tool to showcase their learning and reflect on term one and set some goals for term two. So we have an example of you, a Scott. student's um, art portfolio, and he. this is just a student reflecting on some of the art pieces that he had done up until um, that time in the year and just reflecting on what his next steps were. So we're just going to play this so you can see a little bit of an example. This is my art portfolio. My first artwork that we did this year was abstract art using the color black and white. We basically could do whatever we wanted to using, again, just one Sharpie. And we made different, I made different patterns and images. So I started off by putting a baseball in the middle because I really love baseball. And yeah, went off in four different directions and didn't, I no, really had no idea what I would do. Um, I really like this artwork because I could just put my pen to the paper and do whatever I really wanted without any rules. Um, I really like how I just made all these different images and patterns and drawings. Next, next time I want to work on um, planning out a little bit more because I feel like I just rushed it and draw, drew random things. So you could see here Next that this um, student, and just trying to pause it here. Uh, you can see here how the student was able to not just show, say, like, and this wasn't just a show and share, this is what I did, but they could really then analyze, this is what I really liked about it, this is what, like, what my strengths were here, and these are my next steps. And that has really helped my students um, kind of plan for growth based on thinking about next steps each time they do a piece of work. For our identified students in the SSC, what um, helps them is if we'll brainstorm sentence prompts and key vocabulary that we'll want our students to use in their reflection. So they'll have that piece of paper in front of them. And as they're doing their recording, it's a reminder for them to quickly access those keywords so that they are mentioning them in their recording. And sometimes those pieces can get lost when we're just having a conversation. In using Screencastify to provide verbal feedback to my students, I have seen significant improvement with how the feedback is being accessed. Specifically with our students who struggle with organization and keeping track of papers, um, Screencastify has provided quick and easy access to feedback in one place. So what we've done to accommodate students is create a feedback folder for each student in their Google Drive. Using Screencastify, we create a short video sharing their descriptive feedback. Um, we review learning intentions and success criteria, sorry, and look at samples as well. When I need students to review their feedback, I just get them to go into their feedback folder, watch their video, and match and look for the LI and SC that they need to work on and improve. Yeah, so we're using this as teachers as well to help our students. So not only are the students recording, but we as teachers are recording as well to give them um, our feedback. And that makes it easier for us as well if you think about it. Um, sometimes we can speak to what they've done easier than write out paragraphs. And if they're having to read um, the feedback, it makes it not accessible mm -hmm. for every student. Right, so in thinking about our auditory learners, the hearing the feedback and having a visual to go back and look at it in multiple times really solidifies that feedback and really pushes them to access it and implement it in their next piece. So we've shared some examples on the next slide of um, the teacher sharing some feedback with a student. So one is through a learning intentions and success criteria and the other one is some descriptive feedback um, based on a reading response. Okay, so I'll play this one a little bit here. Hi, Colby. I'm going to be giving you feedback on your biography research on Morgan Friedman. So looking through your slides, I can see that you have research for each of the criteria that we identified in class. So I can tell that you've been collecting research and using informational sources. What I want you to think about, and this is the thinking piece for your writing when we go into our next step, is this section right here where I've created a slide for you about why is he a leader. So I want you to think about why you selected Morgan Freeman and what about him sh and the characteristics and qualities that he has that show he is a leader. Okay, so you can see here how Ms. Filippelli has been giving her students some feedback 
uh, on their presentations right there that they can access. So as we can see, Screencastify has been a great digital tool for both the teachers and the students. Um, when thinking about our identified students in our classrooms, it's really important to think about how we are meeting those accommodations and modifications, specifically when it comes to assessment and the alternate response um, options. So Screencastify provides students with a way to orally respond to some of the conversations and observations and products that are happening in our classrooms for assessment. The classroom teacher is very busy often um, and sometimes and often sorry, doesn't have the time to sit directly with a student to scribe for that student. So using Screencastify to provide the students with the independence to share their thinking and communicate their understanding through an oral response that can then be shared with the teacher um, helps alleviate some of the pressures we have in our classrooms to access all of our students and ensure that the learning is taking place. So on the next slide, we've shared an example of a student sharing her conversation regarding some data for our data management unit. Okay, so basically um, what this line graph shows us is that the battery remaining in the bar graph is 20, 40, 60, 80, and 100, and that in the time it's 4 o'clock, 8 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 16, 20, and 24. So basically, um, at four, the the phone, like with the cell phone battery, it was at a hundred, and then it, and then at eight o'clock it went down, so it increased, oh no, wait, decreased. Um, so here we can see the student has the organizer up on her slide. There are the sentence prompts that she's able to access and answer. She also has the data piece, the graph in front of her that she can refer to, and she's communicating her thinking about each component for the organizer. OK, so um, just linking on to um, what Ms. Filippelli was just saying, when we think about our assessment and evaluations, um, we are we're really having to plan that we're not just using products, not just using tests, and we're also having conversations and observations to pull our assessment information as well as our overall evaluation of how well the students understood um, the content at the end of the unit. So the fact that we can have students voice record is a great tool, not just for products, but also for your conversations and your observations. So um, you can really hear that thinking, that justification piece in this way, and we can really um, address misconceptions and provide timely feedback. So I really find that when I have my students record and explain a concept, I am able to listen to some of the things that I would not be able to know that they didn't understand otherwise if they just had done it as a product on a test. So just thinking about when we're doing conversations, observations, and products, we could use Screencastify for any of these, whether it might be um, assignments, a test, a portfolio, um, conferences, journals, blogs, anything that is an observation, conversation, or, or a product, we can think about how we can use Screencastify to help our students. Um, this is an example of a summative task that my students had done in data management and a student explaining their thinking. Hi, I'm going to be doing question one. How do you know what graph to choose for each set of data? So my first set of data was about a bank manager and his wait time for his customers. So this is continuous. This is numeric continuous data. And it's advised for you to use a line graph or a histogram. So I chose a histogram. And this is how it turned out. What inferences can you make from looking at your first graph? According to the graph, the wait times are very low from 30 seconds to a minute. So I can infer that there's a lot of workers there to bring lower wait times. And since the customers were complaining about the times, I can infer that they came at a, less, at a time with less workers, like a lunch break. So give, second giving this sort of a task to my students, it allowed them to have some thinking time to respond. Um, it allowed them to plan out what they wanted to say, but it also let me see their um, 
thinking and their communication as well? Like, do they have the vocabulary that we learned this term? Did they uh, understand what kind of graph to use depending on the data? It gave me a lot of um, information about how well they understood what we had done throughout the unit. And our goal with the assessment piece is to really provide our students with multiple entry points. So Screencastify allows us a great tool for students to access many of those entry points that are comfortable for them and allow us to pull the information in the best possible way for their strengths and needs. Okay, so now the fun part. How do we get started with this awesomeness? So we're gonna walk you through step by step um, how you can get Screencastify as a extension. Um, we're gonna show you, it's extremely simple, but we'll walk you through it. Okay, so we were going to write down step by step instructions of how to do this, but then we found a sheet that already told you how to do it. So um, we have this linked for you and it's very, very straightforward. So you're going to just on Google type in Screencastify in your browser. You're going to click on the one that's the Chrome Web Store one. And I'm going to just walk you through that in a second. Then you're going to add it to Chrome. Um, when you're ready, you're going to open um, the extension in the upper right of the Chrome browser. My Screencastify looks like this. It's this little arrow here. And right now you can see that it's red because it's recording. Okay. Um, next screen, uh, Screencastify would like to, and it's going to um, access your microphone, access your webcam and things like that. So you're just going to follow the prompts and allow it to do that. And then you're going to have successfully installed Screencastify. Don't worry about the next screen that says the video is in a restricted mode. So just um, make sure that when you have it, your microphone is on. And if you want the webcam to be, that your video is on as well. Okay, and this is here is as a link to you on our slide. So you can refer to this at any point. But I'm just going to go open a new tab here. And I'm just going to go on Google, Screencastify. And you're going to come up with here, okay. So screen recorder, Screencastify, screen recorder for Chrome, okay. Um, okay can click here and there um, there's a screen here with videos for you to see also um, and then you can add to Chrome it's free I'm already installed so that's what it's going to show for me but for you it's going to then lead you through the prompts okay so if you have any questions about how to do this we are available you have our Twitter um, you can let us know and we are help, happy to help. So this brings us to the end of our presentation. Uh, don't forget to tweet us at Natalie Kogan and at Ant underscore Filippelli and hashtag EdTechCamp on air. If you have any questions, um, ask us. And if you have any great ideas that you would like to share, we would love to hear as well. Uh, we look forward to you just going in, exploring the tool, trying it. Um, you're going to have some moments of hearing your students in the background while you're recording, announcements going off, but those just make it all the more real and that's just the reality of our classrooms. So don't worry about having it be perfect, just go in, get the students using it, begin exploring it, and you'll really discover the unbelievable amounts of ways you can use it within your classrooms and with your students and how you can really elevate student voice. All right, so I'm Natalie Kogan. I'm Antonia Filippelli. And we're logging off. off. Bye.